So to properly apply the integral test, we go on through our little uh, checklist here. We have to check first of all, is it decreasing? Is that function decreasing? And then we have to check, is it positive? And then, and then if that if that happens, we we got ourselves a good a good one. So let's check first decreasing. Why would you say it's decreasing? Well, think about it. Sometimes you can make the argument. Uh, I don't know how much how precise or how rigorous you want to do it. Depends on your appetite for rigorousness. Uh, but here you have uh, uh, you have to compare n ln of n to the third over one, and you have to compare that with 1 over n plus 1, that would be the next term, ln of n plus 1 to the third. Now clearly uh, this denominator is bigger because for example n plus 1 is bigger than n and n plus 1 is bigger than n therefore n plus 1 to the third is bigger than n to the third and ln of a bigger number would give you a bigger number. So um, that would tell you that of course uh, this denominator is bigger when you take put it this denominator is bigger, that means the quotient is uh, getting smaller and smaller. Okay, so therefore this one is bigger than that one. That tells you that it's decreasing. Earlier we talked about our fancier way of showing decreasing. You just check the first derivative. If the first derivative is negative, you're done. Okay, so anyways, that, that checks your first condition. It's decreasing. Um, second condition. Second condition would have to be that um, is it positive for all n? And here I should uh, maybe it's all in the n that are we're interested in. You should keep in mind that we're only interested in large n's for sufficiently large n's. So usually these series should have a beginning in the end. And usually you try to avoid uh, dis uh, discontinuity points. For example, if n is equal to zero, we got problems here. Or if n is equal to one, so usually what the standard thing to do is the interesting thing to do, anyways, is to consider the n as uh, the sum as n starts from some other number, like three or whatever. Any tail number would work. That way, you stay away from the discontinuity points. So you can assume the lens are large, anyways. For for large n, of course, for sufficiently large n, um, ln of n will be, of course, bigger than zero. And taking it to the third power won't change that. And multiplying by n is will be bigger than zero. Of course, one over n ln of n to the third. If this number is bigger than zero, its reciprocal will also be uh, bigger than zero. And in other words, if you take a number and it's positive, one over the positive number is still positive. It's pretty easy to check that everything's positive here. There's no negatives anywhere there except uh, for very very small n's. All right, uh, which we don't care about. That proves the two conditions, and we've got ourselves uh, decreasing, we've got ourselves po uh, positive terms, and that tells you, what does that tell you? Those are the two magical ingredients that you need to check, so that you can say then that, uh, so then you can say that both converge or both diverge, so this one behaves exactly, exactly the same as that one. That means that all we have to do is show that this area is infinite and we're done showing that this one is infinite or finite, whatever you may think it is. And I'll leave it as an exercise for you to show well, that that's actually infinite. Or maybe I'll do a little bit of it. Uh, here, we'll do uh, the integral of from uh, 1 to infinity. Actually, we should go from 3, sorry. Uh, 1 over x ln of x to the third dx that's the same thing as the integral uh, 1 over 3 x ln of x dx you can bring down this 3 using your log properties from 3 to infinity this of course you could make a u substitution will make u be equal to ln of x then your differential would be 1 over x dx so this would be the integral of uh, you have 1 over 3 here in use, this would look like. Um, just make it a little bit more color colorful. One over u, and then the dx is e, the dx with a one over x is a du. So this would be du. So this would be one third ln of u. So this would be one third ln of ln of x. And of course, we're going from infinity to three. So this would be equal to one third ln ln of infinity. 
minus one third ln ln of three, which of course is equal to infinite. That shows you that this is infinite, which would in turn show you that since this one is diverges, fix it here. Since this one diverges, then this one diverges as well, because we show using integral test that they both behave the same. That the corners don't matter. This piece over here showed that the corners don't matter. Clear? Alright, come back for another example. See us here next time.